2K Sports welcomes you to the following presentation of the NBA. It's the 2K Sports pregame show. Tonight, it'll be the Chicago Bulls up against the 76ers in Philadelphia. Taking a look at the 76ers, they expended some energy getting out of the first round, closing it out in six games. Now the focus shifts to opening the series tonight on a positive note. The stakes have risen again. Round two of the postseason. Kenny, if you're starting out on the road, mm -hmm. what do you have to do to mm -hmm. steal one of the first two games? Well, you know, they say always they come out with focus, but you know what that means, Ernie? Energy and effort. That's something that every player has inside of them. All they have to do is unleash it. And then you try to build some early confidence. So in this game, you just want to be close at the end so you have a shot. Man, it comes down to execution. So down the stretch, got to make them big buckets. Now let's go down to Kevin Harlan as we approach the tip. What a fantastic look at the skyscrapers that make up the skyline here in the Cradle of Liberty. We're coming to you from Philadelphia. The next stage of the Eastern Conference playoff battle begins here. Game one of the conference semifinals. Both these teams have survived and moved one step closer to the title. Our game tonight featuring the Chicago Bulls as they go up against the Philadelphia 76ers here in Wells Fargo Center. I'm Kevin Harlan here with Clark Kellogg, Greg Anthony, and our sideline reporter, the Hall of Famer, David Aldridge. Tonight with us as well, the book of basketball author, Bill Simmons. Bill, great to see you. It's great to be here. Nobody is more impressed than my 11-year-old son, who can't believe that he's playing a video game and gets to hear my voice. When he hears my voice just yelling at him, now he gets to hear me break down basketball. <laughs> but it's, it's kind wonderful. of fun, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, he likes it. Yeah. GA, it's all yours. Well, Joel Embiid and the Sixers have been through a lot in the last five years. At the beginning, there were so many losses on and off the court. But trust the process became a mantra, one that Embiid embraced. He said, I think a lot about what I went through, how it prepared me to be a better man. I really feel like I'm the process, and the process is about me. Kevin, the process has turned out quite well. Thank you, David. And standing over seven feet, weighing over 250 pounds, it's hard for Embiid to avoid those injuries that plague so many big men, but he in particular seems brittle. Yeah, I mean, I would think that all the seasons he missed was probably <laughs> a red flag for that, for that front. It's going to come down to conditioning and us reading a story in August one summer where it's like Joel Embiid has completely changed his body and stopped drinking milkshakes and stopped having four <laughs> meals a day and all this stuff. But he actually, I think, is underrated as a great player because if you look at the rim protection stats for him, he is as dominant defensively as he is offensively when he has it going. And he can affect the game even if he's carrying a lot of weight and he's not playing that well. I would love to see him in shape. Now let's take a look at the Bulls opening lineup. Porter and Markin in the duo with forward. B out there with Levine, and it's Carter in at the center position. And for the 76ers, the talented combo up front, Horford and MB. And it's Kirk Miles in at the three, the small forward. And so it's the 76ers getting on the board first. Guys, we had to take flight to get to this game tonight, but here's a guy who simply takes flight and flies at will on the basketball court. I mean, it's pretty surreal to watch a guy who can elevate to that level. That's a double whammy, guys. <laughs> That's right. A great defensive play. Then the impact stuff. Well, turning defense to offense, we talk about it all the time. Try to hit your opponent at the other end before they can set up the defense. Here's Fibel. Back to Horford. And it's sent back by Carter. And here they come. Here's B. Oh, he blocked it and deflects off the backboard. Here's Korkmaz, guarded by Porter. Korkmaz passes to Embiid. And they double up Embiid. Pass to Fiber. Over to the wing. Clock at four. Good on the triple. Neto's got five now. 
and good to get him going early. That, that shot should give him some confidence. Perhaps he's set for a big night. I mean, he can be a difference maker for him when he's on his game. Porter kicks to Levine. In a handful of players land the Supermax contract bill. By and large, how do you see those deals working out? It's tough. You, nobody's really been happy with it yet. You know, it's so much money and it's such a big part of somebody's salary cap. And you're just kind of handicapped with it. And we've seen John Wall is the worst case scenario of it. But the situation Charlotte was in with Kemba Walker, where he makes the NBA team and now his Supermax is $240 million right. instead of one eight. Like, that's crazy. And in a salary cap league, to pay $50 million a year for somebody is just nuts. It compromises the ceiling of the team. So the Bucks are going to be in this position, to be honest, where he's making $55 million a year and the cap's $120 million. How are you going to put a good team on? You can't maneuver. You can't. So I, I would put a wrinkle in there that I would make the super max, whatever, pay the player whatever the number is, but it only counts for like $32 million or something. Make it so that it's not a percentage of the total cap. Yeah, yeah. make his cap figure is 32. Even if you're paying him 55, and then that way people can compete. Him. And the Bulls with another miss. And it's Neto with the ball. He'll bring it up for the Philadelphia 76ers. Trailing by two. Here's Bible. And he drops in the way up off the glass. And once he got to the 10, I think he was surprised to find himself that wide open. Well, this early, they should be showing a lot more energy on defense. It's not there. No good from B. Boy, that is awesome defense, guys, against a capable finisher. Well done. I'm sure the coaches love that. And the whistle blows. It's going to be on B. That's his first foul. Here's Neto. He's got five. At the elbow, Horford. Pass to Korkmaz. Here's Thibel. Guarded by Levine. Thibel can't get it to go. Bulls have gone 50% from the field, hitting three of six since the opening tip. Puts the D in a tough spot when you have a point guard who can throw it down. He really does, G.A. He really does put pressure on him. And you know, guys, showing how dynamic a weapon he is for this offense, they feed off of that energy and ability to make play. It gets them going. 14 feet away. Here's MB. Oh, oh my yeah. goodness! Oh, yeah. What a play! Boy, Embiid wants to own the inside on both sides of the floor. He is a force in the paint and relishes hitting those boards. And from everything we're hearing, Bill, the draft one and done aspect may be coming to an end. I think for me, the G League is the key to all this. I would like to see the guys come right out of high school and run the G League and have an actual infrastructure that's attached to the world. And the G League is having an effect on the NBA. There are a lot of former guys yeah. from that league playing in, in the big league. And the other thing is, like, sports rights are becoming more and more valuable with the streaming services. Just the fact that you can watch a game anywhere you are. You can watch it on your phone. You can watch it if you're in China. You can watch it if you're in Hawaii. And I think the G League should be a bigger thing. So if they can figure out a way to kind of steal college basketball's corner with some of this stuff while also preparing these guys. The one and done that makes no sense to me. I don't understand what anyone gains from going to college for five months and then pretend they're a college student. And the rejection by MB. Yeah, good energy and awareness that time by MB to deny that shot. And out of bounds is Chicago gains possession. Let's take this chance now to show you the list of the postseason scoring leaders. Well, you look at B, leading the league in points per game. Such a great player. steal and here comes the break Neto with the bucket Neto's got seven points Bulls trail by four they can use a big shot here to get this offense going too many empty possessions right now they need a basket and there's the call on Joel Embiid that is his first foul of the game 76ers on defense here's B 
good challenge that time by Embiid using all that length quite well. No good from B. They've been beating them to a lot of those loose balls and rebounds here to start. Yeah, the half and half balls are going their way, and that's really a function of effort and intensity. You know, the ball doesn't discriminate. Whoever goes and gets it, that's who owns it. So he gets them both. And at the line, it's all about consistency with him. His routine, his stroke, it never wavers. Time called here. The Bulls decide to talk it over. As the teams head into this timeout, a chance for the coaches now to map out some plays for the next few minutes and a chance for the players to rehydrate with some Gatorade. That's important if they want to make sure they don't wear down later in the game. Absolutely. Over the course of a game, you have to stay hydrated. Outside, Levine passes it to B. Lock at six. And again, no good by Chicago. He's certainly been cold this quarter, guys, but trying to shoot his way back into a group. Bill was in Boston where you received your master's degree in journalism. What attracted you to this profession? Why, why journalism? Um, I couldn't do anything else, and I didn't like manual labor. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, that really was it. I was good at writing. Like anybody in your family or anybody you yeah, are? I was a good writer. And I like writing and sports. Yeah. So kind of like, oh, you know, those two things Did it in high school on the same? Yeah, I started yeah. in high school. I had a the big thing for me was in college. I had a column for the uh, school newspaper, really from freshman year on. And around sophomore year, I felt like it started to get momentum. And that was the first time I thought, I wonder if I can get paid for this. Right. Which, as it turned out, uh, no, until I was about 29. Yeah. Yeah. Kicks it to Horford. Inside. Here's Neto. He gets that one. That's four connections and five tries now for. Here's B. And trying for the go ahead basket. It doesn't go in. For Philadelphia, they've gone 0 3 and are still looking for that first bucket here in the second quarter. On the court right now, second quarter for the Bulls. Young and Carter are the big men inside. White is out there with B, and it's Valentine in at the three spot. He gets a chance now to catch up with the fourth member of our crew, Hall of Famer David Aldrin. Hey, Kevin. B in that last game against the Celtics was outstanding. He finished up with 65 points and played tremendous defense as well, really causing havoc on both ends of the floor. The numbers in that game make me anxious to see what he can do tonight. Kevin? Thank you, David. You're right. He was a one-man wrecking crew in that one. Yeah, he was not going to let them lose that game. We'll see if he comes in with that same attitude tonight. Yeah, you know, every night's different. They may try to double him. They might force him to adjust or force him to make plays with the pass instead. We'll see. Now here's Levine. He's been patient so far. Nothing on the scoreboard yet. Valentine passes to B. To the inside. Hart. And it's Philadelphia with the rebound. And, and typically, he has the touch to finish when he's in tight, but not sure on that position. The pass to Burke. Bill, do you ever think we're going to eliminate conferences in the NBA playoff seating? I think that they would have done a 16-seed, no-conference playoff format years ago. I think they're really worried about the travel, though. And they've looked at it, and they've really studied it, and they've looked at the effects of, let's say, Boston plays Portland in round one and you're flying 3,100 miles or 3,200 miles and three time zones and all that stuff, and it's a 2-2-1-1-1 series, what is the effect on the team if it goes seven? I think they're really afraid of it. Mm -hmm. um, I wish they did it. I don't like the conferences. I don't really understand them. And over the course of NBA history, they've been really confused by the conferences. I wrote about this in the Book of Basketball, where we had years where San Antonio was playing in the East for a while, yes, yes. and Baltimore was in the West, which, go look at a map. Baltimore being in the West <laughs> is ridiculous. Ba Baltimore was in the West, and Philly was in the East, and they're, like, 50 miles away from each other. Yeah, they know So sense. they've never really 100% figured out the conferences, and I just think the 1 through 16 makes more sense. It would sure be better basketball. It would be better. Could have been much better defense. I mean, you can't give this guy any room to operate. Guys, they're looking for a way to score here. Yeah, they've had a tough time taking the lid off. Here's Carter, marking and trying to break loose. 
and he tries off the glass, but it's no good. Here we go, one on one. Offensive rebound. Holden, good. And now a 12 point 76ers lead. It's been their Achilles heel defensively. They just have not been able to control that backboard. Greg, they're getting outworked on the glass, and those second chance buckets have devastated their defense. Chicago calls timeout. Definitely not pleased with their rebounding at the defensive end. The, the number of putbacks they've allowed has been terrible. I'm sure that's what he's going to address during this timeout. It's blocked. Out of bounds. Bulls ball. Chicago keeps possession. That's out of bounds. Chicago will retain possession. Yeah, gets a finger on it, but just can't quite come up with the steal. Clearly a careless pass. He got away with one there. Yep, it counts. And that's 13 points for B. Bill, you're a basketball historian. We know that. Um, do, do fans romanticize too much about the past? I would say the other way. I think they don't appreciate it enough. Especially like uh, the millennials and Gen Z. You know you're out there. You're playing this game right now. They tend to think the league started when Kobe showed up and that the 90s and the 80s didn't happen. I sense a real resentment from the younger fans with the LeBron versus MJ thing because LeBron's their guy. They get to watch LeBron. They don't want to hear that MJ was better than them, so they made the case for LeBron and the way things are now. Well, what, what about like the Oscar Robertson, the Elgin Baylors? And we talked about, oh, like, yeah. my goodness, you talk about some of these players. Unbelievable. Yeah, the Fantastic 60s, numbers. 70s, 80s. Oh. I think part of what hurts is people can go on YouTube and when you watch some of the older stuff, nobody's playing. Mm -hmm. And the well is running dry for him right now. Nothing fall. And you know, you can sense his frustration. This is going to be a test of his resolve here. Well, the first thought from the D there was to protect the rim, so good idea to take the three in transition. And Philadelphia has possession after the three-pointer from Zach Levine. Carter against Horford. Good on the bucket. Horford's got four points this quarter. A remarkable interior presence. Horford's a veteran who still has those polished post moves. To the paint. Out to Carter. Has to be. Fires for three. And again, it's the Bulls from deep. He does not lack for confidence. And he shouldn't. I mean, this guy's a dangerous scorer. Pass to Horford. Now Burke. He's got nine. Passes it to Korkmaz. Offline with his three. Bulls trail by six. To the middle. There's Markinen. Two free throws coming up, and they call the shooting foul. That one on Horford. They've hit every one of their free throws here in the second quarter. Very important when you're trailing. Boy, in this day and age of how the game is played, marking and skill set, hand and glove fit. Superb at spacing the floor with his shooting stroke. Well, he's come through for them at the line today, and you love having a big fella who's so capable on his free throw. Bill, if you were building a franchise from scratch, which one current player would you begin with or, or build around? Probably Giannis, because he's, he's so turned young 25 this year. I still feel like the ceiling of what he's going to do is go up as he becomes more of a shot maker. He's really durable, which I think is underrated. Like, he's just built to play basketball. Um, there's certain guys like that. I think Kevin Garnett was like that. Mm -hmm. Tim Duncan was like that. Just guys who you just know are going to be around for 17, 18 years the way. I like to watch the running styles. And the game, the game just comes so easy to him. He's so athletic and really cares and is really competitive and just wants to do this and win and win a basketball. So, um, that's it. Chicago with the ball after the Sixers pick up two. Five on the clock. Here's B. The 17 footer goes down. B's got 22 points. And he's clearly led the way offensively. The question is, can they ride him and get back into it? Burke, the pass to Thibel. Horford against Carter. From 15 feet away, he climbs that one off the back iron, and down it falls. 
stretches the four nicely for a big, versatile. Horford's become a perennial all-star. And foul on the shot, so he'll get a chance at the line. I'll tell you what, he earned his money on that foul. Yeah, if you go to foul, then make sure that you don't give a chance for the and one. Embiid, he's checked in for the 76ers. Raul Neto comes in for Trey Burke. And love how he's getting himself to the line this quarter. If he keeps it up, it'll end up creating some foul problems on the other side. And that can always help a team's cause. Here's Thibel. Down low, Horford. It's tipped. They retain possession. Here's the break. And it's Levine that time on the assist from Porter. Levine's got five points now this quarter. And you know what you like about Levine as a finisher? I mean, he can go straight to the rack, pop out to the three, and can do everything in between as well. Neto surveying the floor. A nice shot by Embiid. Embiid got ten points. And, Bill, when you yourself get out on the court, is there a play you try to channel or emulate, try to visualize in your mind? You mean when I'm playing pickup? Yes. Yes. Oh, well now, at this point in my life, I, it's Davos Bertans. Is that how you say it? Davos Bertans. Davos Bertans? Yeah, yes. By the way, what I, a great stroke. I, mean, I emulate all stretch fours. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's the way I at this point in my life. <laughs> I run from three-point line to three-point line. You stay in the perimeter. Yeah. Don't don't tangle up inside. My free throw attempts are zero because yep. I don't go to the line. Just fire away. And I just, I want you to know I'm there. Take a the jump shot. And don't ask me to do anything else, please. I'll set some picks. Uh, yeah. You are. You're, you're a great screen I'll set, set some picks. You're, you're a great pick and roll. The pass to Horford. Ennis. Castaneda. Offensive rebound. And he did everything he could to make that shot as difficult as possible. And you know what, guys? That will pump him up because he takes a ton of pride in what he does on defense. Yeah, way to play in attack mode and get to the line. And, you know, the defense gets their money's worth on that foul, stopping the layup and not giving up the and one. Catching up on the changes for Chicago. Down comes in for Markinen, and it's wide in for Zach Levine. B, and down it goes, jamming that one home. That's a stomach punch, guys. Mm. Turn it over and give him a free run to the bucket. Oh, you're so right. No question who has the momentum now. You know, those kinds of plays can be difference makers, game changers, momentum shifters, especially in a close contest where one or two possessions can impact the outcome. And a moment here to take a look at some of the hustle stats for the Bulls. Well, I think the defensive aggressiveness on display here has caught him off guard, playing airtight defense and coming up with the steal. And the other thing they've done well is they've run the shooters off their sweet spots. They've really closed out well and forced them to put the basketball on the floor. Here's Thibel. That is Young picking up that last basket. Over Young. Horford trying to free himself up. Embiid, no good. Chicago leading by six. Guys, we've seen some excellent offensive output. Yeah, great momentum for them offensively. And now Philadelphia on the break. Thibault can't get it to go. And, and he has definitely been struggling in this quarter. You know, guys, it seems to me as though he's over anxious. He seems to be pressing, trying too hard, moving too fast. Just needs to calm himself down and wait for good shots. And the 76ers decide to take their first time out here. And they're committing an awful lot of fouls here and not of the good variety. You don't want to give up easy layups, sure, but it's been a nonstop parade to the foul line. Kyle O'Quinn, he's checked in for Al Horford. Pass to O'Quinn. Now here's Ennis. To the middle, shot to stop the run, and the dunk by MB. Hey, once MB catches the hot hand now, he's looking to shoot it as much as he can. B the pass to Murray. He kicks to White. Inside. B. And MB with the block. And now Philadelphia on the break. That one misses. Now Chicago takes it the other way. Here's B. 
It's rebounded by Neto. Just not there from a rhythm standpoint right now. It's really eluding him. One thirty-one left in the first half of basketball. Passes it to Embiid. And stolen by Murray. Bill, we so appreciate you stopping by, spending some time with us. Always feels like uh, there's so much more to talk about, which means we got to get you back here, if you don't mind. Yeah. We'll look forward to that. Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> and, Clark, you know what? Bill will always give you a great point of view. And you know what? I think he needs his own barbershop talk show, Kevin. I mean, he's done everything else in media. Go barbershop on him, Bill. And he just dangles from the bucket after sending that one through. And you can see which team has the swagger right now. Well, you know what? You don't want to do too much to get an opponent riled up. You got to be mindful of that. Outside, White takes the 13-footer, and the jumper falls for him. And now a 10-point Bulls lead. Beautiful touch there. Give White these types of looks consistently, and he's going to make you pay. And the whistle blows. It's going to be on B. That's his fourth. Six seconds left in the first half. Here's White. And the Bulls, another three. And you have got to honor White on the perimeter. Once he gets comfortable from there, it's going to be bad news for the defense. And so it should. We're back for more exciting action from the Eastern Conference semifinal. He's checking for Sadoransky. And so it's Porter bringing it up now for the Bulls. 14 points, their largest lead in the game. The talented combo up front, Horford and MB. And it's Korkmaz in the small forward position. And that's the group for Brett Brown as we begin the second half. the pass to Embiid. Here's Thibel, defended by Carter. Here's Thibel, five to shoot. The 76ers need to get off a shot. Horford, no luck. You know, they don't score on that shot, but they're going to be happy with those kinds of possessions. Puts the D in a tough spot when you have a point guard who can throw it down. He really does, G.A. He really does put pressure on you. And you know, guys, showing how dynamic a weapon he is for this offense, they feed off of that energy and ability to make plays. It gets them going. MB the pass to Thibel. To the paint, here's Korkmaz. Lee Baz was put in just the right spot. It's a great move, and he catches the defense completely off guard. Yeah, if that's a harbinger of things to come, he's looking at having a very big second half. And foul on the shot. He'll shoot two at the free throw line. Yeah, the defender all over. Greg, he got him good there. I mean, that's why the shot was so far off. First one falls for him. Both free throws, good from B. The 76ers trail by 16. They've been looking out of sync offensively. Yeah, the, the, their offense has ground to a standstill. Here's Thibel. Six on the shot clock. That one drops for him. Thibel's got six points. Not much resistance from the defense. Easy play that time for him. Not quite two and a half minutes played here in the second half. Here's B. And contact on the shot, so he'll be shooting free throws here. That's good from B. And Philadelphia making a change here. Bolden's checked in. He hits both from the strike. So it's Philadelphia now. It's a 16-point game. Neto, the pass to Bolden. Back to Neto. For three. 
Chicago grabs the miss. Now here's Levine. Defense right on him. He feeds it to Markinen. Good. He has six. Boy, a terrific find. Levine plays mostly the two, but he came into the league as a point guard. Pass to Thibel. That one falls. How about that move? Is this guy special or what? Just love watching him operate inside. Out to Carter. They get it again. Here's Markinen. Fouled on the shot and picks up two points. So one free throw coming up. And you know, so often the size of Markinen overpowers the defense. Even when he gets hit, he still finishes over and through him. Trey Burks checked in for the 76ers. That free throw good from Markinen. Here's Neto. He's got 12. Pass to Embiid. Second half here. We're just over three and a half minutes into it. Let's it go from 11. Neto can't get it to go. Chicago leading by 19. Order outside. But they get it back. Levine can't hit. And the activity he shows around the rim is why he is such a respected defender. And you know what? He's not going to give up an easy finish at the rim. I mean, that's just a, against his constitution. Chicago making a switch here. Marjanovic has checked in. Chicago has gone 0 of 2 from deep to start things here in the second half. Kicks to Porter. Some nice ball movement by the Bulls. And he'll shoot free throws here. Clearly fouled on that shot that time. The whistle blowing. And if they continue, Kevin, their outstanding free throw shooting, that'll help them seal the deal. Yeah, they've not missed a single foul shot this half. And that's taking care of business, fellas. Both free throws good from B. Burke with it. 11 points in the game. Pass to Embiid. Back to Burke. The 15 footer. A rebound by Marjanovic. Marjanovic has got five rebounds tonight. Marvelous lead pass, and he throws it down. He's taking matters into his own hands. Yeah, we didn't expect to see that kind of finish. And you know, guys, when your point guard is making explosive plays at the rim, I really do think it sets the tone for the rest of the team. That's a floater go. Burke can't get it to go. Here's B. Hits the three-point bomb. B's got 13 points now in the quarter. Well, he's filling it up right now. Getting the shots he wants and delivering in a big way. They need a good offensive possession. Yeah, they've gone a long time without a bucket. And Philadelphia calls time here. Yeah, things not going their way, and he wants to just try to talk this one over. And you know what, guys? If for nothing else, just to slow things down a little bit, change it up somewhat. James Ennis, he'll check in for Raul Neto. Now, here's Burke. He's tightly guarded. MB dishes to Burke. Just five to shoot to stop the run. Porter pulls it in. No matter what looks they get, they just can't convert to stop this run. And, you know, they've got to be careful because this is when the team concept breaks down and guys start playing hero ball. And of the last six baskets, five have come on the interior. This is just smash mouth physical basketball, guys. Burke looking over the floor. Another miss by Philadelphia. Boy, just cannot buy a bucket, guys. I'll tell you what, that's a painful quarter for him, and it's painful for me to watch, too. Well, part of their game plan was to block out the noise and just stay focused. And what's been impressive is that it's not been any one player. It's been a collective effort, contributions from everybody. Embiid finds Burke. Let's it fly from 18. 
and the bank shot is good. Berg's got 13 points. Boy, the floor awareness and passing ability of MB, very impressive, and he continues to grow as a passer. D, the pass to Markinen. B, Burke covering. Here's Marjanovic, and he uses the glass on the layup. And there's a pattern starting to take shape here. They're working it inside and getting good shots from close range. Well, I agree with you. Four of their last five baskets have been exactly of that variety. And Bede gets to Ennis. From deep three-point range, they get a hand on it. Burke with it, now defended by Levine. Burke can't get it to go. Oh, a tough quarter for him offensively. He hasn't been able to give his team a lift when they need it. Two on one as they jump out on the break. It's deflected, and it's going to be out of bounds. The Bulls will take it. Bulls ball. And the 76ers with some changes. Kyle O'Quinn is checked in for Joel Embiid, and it's Scott in for Jonah Bolden. Thaddeus Young, he's checked in for Chicago. Chandler Hutchison comes in for Porter. There's the pass to B. To the inside, here's Marjanovic, and it's blocked by O'Quinn. Ennis taking his time here. He kicks it to Burke. Pass to O'Quinn. Back to Burke. It's picked off. In transition, here come the Bulls. Here's B. Up and in on the layup. B's got 47 points. And a breakdown here, guys. The hustle stats for the Bulls. Their high-energy defensive effort has paid off for them, guys, with more than a few steals over the course of the ballgame. Yeah, but also, they haven't missed a beat in terms of their fast break game. That's been equally as effective all night long. Chicago's gone one of three from downtown since halftime. Pass to Marjanovic. Goes back up. Young, right side. And another shot. And the nice bucket inside for Marjanovic. Marjanovic has got six points. That kind of energy and hustle on the glass usually produces good results. Fires, high post, and that one's good. Burton. A quick trigger. And from that range, if he senses the defenders have backed off, forget about it. Here's B. Good on the shot. B's got 49 points in the game. It just seems like the more he touches it, the more the lead grows. Now Burke, he's got 17. Shot clock at five. That's a basket. His eighth from the field, eight of 14. And the shooting has really been there for him today, but he may have to take it upon himself to continue to carry this team and try and get out of this hole. Count it. Well, we've seen that movie a few times, haven't we? An easy bucket in the paint. Well, listless and lifeless at the defensive end. I mean, especially inside. They've really got to pick up that interior defense. Philadelphia moving the ball around. O'Quinn with it. Boyanovich on him. O'Quinn, the pass to Burke. A three-pointer, no good. He can't seem to find the range here in the second. He did a great job in the first, hitting three from outside. Well, you got to be in awe of what he's doing this quarter, actually destroying the opponent. And it's Burke with the ball for Philadelphia. Passes to Korkmaz. Back to Burke. Poke loose. Nabbing another steal. And that's his sixth steal of the night. Imposing his will at the defensive end. Young passes to Marjanovic. B, Burke covering. Shot clock at six. Second chance shot. Chicago now working with the new shot clock. And the shot goes in. Marjanovic has got 10 points. Wow, has he flipped the switch at halftime. Much more effective here in the second half. 
Here's Burke. True on the 14-footer. I'll tell you what, guys. There's not much more he can do. I mean, he's been on fire. Yet, they still trail in this game. Ennis on the double team. And there's the pass to Hutchison. Nice pass. Led him to the rack perfectly for the layup. Hutchinson's got his second basket of the night. Philadelphia's gotten off to a very slow start from three-point range in the second half. They're 0 for 4. Pass to Burke. 34 seconds left here in the third quarter. Back to Gorkmas. And it's good for two. That's serving it up on the platter there. What a nice pass. A high percentage look was the result. Here's B, and two free throws coming up, unable to get that one to go with all the contact. Oh, the, the officials are all over that one. Clearly a foul. I mean, didn't give him any choice but to blow the whistle. I mean, you got to play without fouling. He's off on the first. Chicago making some changes. Carter, he's checked in for Marjanovic. Denzel Valentine comes in for Chandler Hutchison, and it's wide in for Zach Levine. Good on the second free throw. Philadelphia with the ball. 20 seconds left to play in the third. Here's Thibel. White covering. Here's Thibel. From deep. And he was able to put it up in time, but doesn't fall. And so it's Chicago. Sitting pretty as the quarter comes to a close. Their lead all the way up there at 35 points. And they're winning the turnover battle very easily in this one. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. And how about a look now at our assist of the game? Brought to you by State Farm. And he's always been uh, the favorite to bag this honor. These kind of feeds are his bread and butter. Well, you can't run away from the DNA. And it's the 76ers with the ball. Here's Neto. And the foul on Wendell Carter. That'll be his second foul of the game. And the 76ers making a change here. Korkmaz is checked in. Here's Neto. Takes it from 10. Misses off the left iron. My goodness, how about that miss? I mean, that's two easy points that they just given away. So for Chicago right now, Arkin and Carter are up front. Levine at the two with Porter at the three. And it's B in at the point guard. Chicago leading by 21. Carter outside. And now Philadelphia on the break. Here's Fibel. Good work defensively by Carter. Here's B. Rebound by the 76ers. You, you almost have to assume he's going to knock those down when he is that open. Here's Korkmaz. And that'll be two free throws coming up. Officials on the call with the foul. Yeah, easy call. Yeah, you can hear the smack all the way over here. On the free throw, no good. The 76ers trail by 21. A tremendous boost for these guys as this game winds down. And what will be a win here in game one of the series for Chicago? It was a standout performance across the board. I mean, it was like watching a cat play with a mouse. They, they were able to do more or less whatever they wanted. And you know, when you look at the huge impact he had, just a monster game for B. He just looked like an orchestrator out there. His teammates kept running to the open spot, and he found them time and time again. B 
these guys have had some good motion on offense. Nice assistant. And, and when everyone's involved offensively, it has a way of helping you on the defensive side as well. Bolden passes to Ennis. Kicks it to Burke. Just four to shoot. Another miss by Philadelphia. The shot and game clock separated by four. Here's B. Milton grabs the. Smith left side. And Smith with the stuff. And can you always depend on him or what to lead you to the right place with that pass? Money. And so Chicago takes this one, and by a big margin. A pretty good feeling right now for them to be out in front like this in the series. You know, Kevin, momentum so, so critical. And you know they'll want to ride this wave into game two. It's time now to go courtside as we send you over to David Aldridge from the sideline. David, take it away. Kevin, thanks. Well, best of both worlds for you tonight, Shay. Your team got the win, and you had that incredible third-quarter performance. What got you so hot coming out of the break? Hey, you know, coming out, out of halftime, man, I just felt so rejuvenated. I wanted to attack them whenever I had a chance. I think they were caught off guard a little bit that, and uh, we, just, we just let it snowball into a big quarter. And that made all the difference tonight. Congratulations, guys.